Imagine your belly fat is a locked vault, and insulin is the bouncer who decides what gets stored and what gets burned. In one lab experiment, removing about 18% of deep belly fat in obese mice improved insulin sensitivity and delayed diabetes. So this isn't just fat, it's a metabolic switch. Now imagine you're paying that bouncer overtime with stress, short sleep, and constant bites, even the healthy ones. So insulin stays high and the vault stays sealed. The result feels unfair. You push harder, cut more, and still wake up puffy, snacky, and stuck, like running on a treadmill that's tilted uphill. Use these 10 extremely fast tips and you stop fighting the vault. You lower the bouncer, flip the switch, and your belly finally gets the message to let go. Over months and years, that vault doesn't just change your waistline, it quietly rewires your energy, hunger, and mood. The medical term is insulin resistance, and it keeps the lock engaged even when you're trying hard. You see it as stubborn belly fat, late-night cravings, afternoon crashes, and sleep that never feels deep enough. The good news is you can reverse the signal faster than you think with 10 targeted moves that lower insulin and calm cortisol. In the first 72 hours, the noise starts to drop. Less puffiness, fewer cravings, and a surprising sense of control. That first 24 hours, nothing disappears overnight, but the lock starts to ease. Cut net carbs, stop the all-day nibbling, and insulin finally steps off the gas pedal. That's the hormonal signal that tells the vault around your waist it's allowed to open. Start your first meal with a big leafy salad, because fiber is the velvet rope that slows the crowd, and minerals like potassium and magnesium keep you from feeling like a zombie. Pour on olive oil for satiety and add a splash of vinegar if you tolerate it. You're basically installing a speed bump for blood sugar before the rest of the meal even shows up. Then eat enough protein to feel sturdy, but don't go ultra lean. Dry, sad protein often turns into a 9 p.m. snack mission. Choose fattier fish, chicken with skin, or meat with a little marbling so hunger doesn't boomerang. Early on, add some dietary fat on purpose. It's training wheels that help you fast longer without feeling punished. And fasting is where your body practices burning its own fuel. Also do the boring fix that makes everything easier, electrolytes and B vitamins. When carbs drop, water and sodium often drop with them. And what people call keto flu is frequently just keto. Where did my salt go? Value, you feel steady enough to keep going. Hours 24 to 72. This is the switch flip window. Your liver ramps up ketone production, your brain gets a smoother power source, and the snack voice often goes from breaking news alert to low battery notification. But here's the plot twist. Stress and bad sleep can keep the vault sealed even if your food is perfect. Cortisol is like a counterfeit printer for glucose. When life is loud, your body prints extra fuel, insulin rises to manage it, and belly fat stays protected. So tips for speed aren't just food, their nervous system moves. Take long walks, do physical chores, get outside, and stop doom-scrolling like it's your second job. Protect sleep like it's your direct deposit. Darker evenings, a consistent bedtime, and a little earlier last meal helps a lot of people. The short-term payoff is shockingly fast. Fewer cravings, fewer cravings at night, and energy that doesn't crash after lunch. Value. Control without white knuckling. Days 4 to 7. Now the rhythm starts to feel normal. Appetite drops because you're finally fat adapted, and fasting windows stretch without you bargaining with the fridge. Keep the salad first habit so you don't accidentally eat the whole meal, and then remember vegetables exist. You're building a system that makes the right choice the default choice. This is also where dietary fat becomes strategic. If you feel solid and cravings are quiet, stop adding extra bonus fats and let your body pull more from stored belly fat. You're not going low fat. You're just not flooding the engine. Add one small enjoyable keto-friendly thing so your brain doesn't stage a rebellion. Think berries and cream or a couple squares of dark chocolate, not a bakery tour. Most people notice the belly deflates before it shrinks. Less puffiness, less tight waistband, less why am I hungry again. Value. Consistency stops feeling like suffering. Week 2. This is where the real villain, insulin resistance, starts losing its grip. 
Think of insulin resistance as sticky glue on the volt lock. You can tug on calories all day, but the door won't swing until the glue loosens. Keep meal windows tight, stop snacking, and use the helpful extras if you want them. Diluted apple cider vinegar with meals, cinnamon, and the basics that support glucose handling like adequate vitamin D, chromium, and vitamin B1. Treat supplements like seasoning, not the meal. Your real leverage is repeated low insulin hours. With better sleep and lower stress, you often notice a weird win. You can eat a normal plate and feel done, not done for five minutes. Its value? Your body starts cooperating. Weeks three to four add tip nine, the two-engine workout plan because exercise isn't just about burning calories, it's about sending fuel to the right places. Engine one is anaerobic work, weights or short, hard intervals, because trained muscle acts like a glucose sponge and improves insulin sensitivity. Engine two is aerobic work, walking, hiking, cycling, because it burns fat with a low-stress bill and keeps you moving on recovery days. Don't chase soreness like it's a personality trait. Train hard enough to send a signal, then recover so your body can rebuild. The quick benefits are steadier blood sugar and a calmer appetite. The long benefits are more muscle, better metabolism, and a waistline that changes even when the scale plays hard to get. Value. You build an engine, not a punishment plan. Month 2 to 3 and beyond, tip 10 is the turbo button. Periodic prolonged fasting, used after the basics feel easy. A 24 to 48 hour fast every couple weeks creates a longer low insulin stretch where your body has no choice but to cash in stored fat, especially around the midsection. Do it with electrolytes, stay hydrated, and follow the simplest rule in this video. Don't eat unless you're actually hungry. Habit eating is how the vault relocks. And quick safety reality check. If you're pregnant, underweight, have a history of disordered eating, or take glucose lowering or blood pressure meds, get clinical guidance first. Measure your waist, not just the scale, because belly fat often shows up in inches before it shows up in the number. And if you slip, don't spiral. Return to the rhythm. Salad first, fewer eating windows, calmer sleep, some strength work, lots of walking. Value, you stop fighting your body and start changing the rules it follows. If you like receipts, the pattern is consistent. Sleep loss worsens insulin sensitivity. Vinegar can blunt post-meal glucose. Time-restricted eating improves metabolic markers in many trials. And both resistance training and HIT show better glucose control. So this isn't hype, it's biology. So what happens to your belly fat when you use these 10 extremely fast tips? It stops acting locked and starts acting responsive. In the first few days, the noise drops. Less puffiness, fewer cravings, steadier energy. Over the next couple weeks, the trend shows up where it matters, your waistline. The point isn't suffering, it's sending a cleaner signal. Lower insulin, calmer cortisol, better recovery. Run the basics daily. Low net carbs, salad first with olive oil and vinegar, solid protein and electrolytes so you don't feel wrecked. Add sleep and stress control like they're part of the plan, not extras. Walk most days, train hard a couple times a week, and let soreness earn you recovery. Measure your waist weekly and watch the direction, not the drama. If this was useful, hit like, subscribe, and tell me. What's the hardest part for you, craving, sleep, stress, or consistency?